a good day to you. Once again, we welcome you to our YouTube channel, Emanzi Business Marketing Agency. I hope you're well, staying safe, keeping yourselves away from COVID, uh, washing your hands, sanitizing, because we still need each other. I thank our sponsors, Serena Hotels. We can't do this without you. We thank you for having faith in us and keeping us going. We also thank our subscribers, our viewers. We thank you for the responses we've had from the last episodes. And we're grateful that you're with us and we know that we're doing something and making an impact. Well, today it's a bit different. We're not talking from offices, but we're aware things are happening. We're at a farm visit in Busika, a place called Koko, Kokolo. Um, owned by Peter and his wife, Peter Senkungu, and his wife, and it's, um, it's a beautiful place. It's nice to know that people are here making serious money, and we're going to hear from Peter. He's going to take us through his journey, poultry journey, how he started, what are the profits, the challenges, and how he's making it through. Tell us about your farm and um, I saw right from the entrance it's not like just entering anywhere else yeah. so please tell us about your farm and how you've managed to make it okay. mm. um, Peter Senkung is my name uh, the farm is called uh, Premise Farms we started this farm as a family business just to keep us going but uh, in this period, it has turned out to be something that we can rely on as a family. Wow. Because of whatever is happening in the country. Uh, myself, I'm an animal scientist. I studied uh, animal nutrition, so I knew about farming from school and even from home. We survived a lot on chicken. What's animal nutrition? Animal nutrition is the science of, of feeding animals. Ah. Um, so well, from, back from home, I was in chicken farming. My mother used to raise chicken to mm. pay our school fees, mm. and she could involve us even before I started chicken farming. So I've known chicken for quite a long time. Um, even when I was in campus, I was uh, one of the students who was keeping chicken in Cabanyoro to to get uh, pocket money. <laughs> so. I've ma I made my first money from chicken. <laughs> uh, away, from, away from farming, I also engage in um, business of, of, of feeding chicken. I do, we have another family company called Nutrinova. Nutrinova basically deals with nutrition, health and profitability. So we help farmers make money out of chicken farming and other animals by feeding them right. Mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, when you feed chicken right, you keep them healthy, they can produce profitable. They make you money. Yeah, so we do that business. And we also bring a lot of uh, nutritional technologies for the farmers to still benefit out of their, uh, their chicken and other livestock. So, um, chicken farming in Uganda has taken a long way and I'm glad to say I've been part of the journey on some of, some of the farmers. And now I'm making a journey for myself and my family. And your family. Here in Busika, we mm. are strictly keeping layer buds mm. and a few broilers for home consumption. You will see some of them in the small cage. <laughs> we um, currently we we do table eggs. Mm. Table eggs are eggs that are produced for for eating in homes. Uh, there are other eggs produced for hatching, but here we concentrate on table eggs. Our journey started a long time ago in Kalaji. We, have a, we had another farm we are renting. We started with the business of brooding chicken. How many years ago? Um, maybe three years, three, four years ago, we used to brood chicken and sell the brooded birds at eight weeks. Mm. So from there, we thought that we could raise the birds for business as a family and produce eggs for sale. So in Kalaji, we all started our first egg batch, egg producing, uh, birds. Uh, we had around uh, 1,200 birds. Right now we um, our, our plans by end of this year is to have a total of um, 
of around 45,000 birds. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's our plan. But currently in production, we have um, 8,500 birds. And uh, we have growers which will be in production within two months, uh, around 15,000 birds, which we, wait, we are waiting for to go into production. Um, for those who are viewing Emanzi and be watching this video, I want to tell you that the future is in, in agriculture. Mm. There's no doubt about that. Mm. And um, for a country like Uganda, the population is growing, growing very fast. People still eat. Even amidst yeah. COVID, people yeah. are at home We're eating. Still eating. Yes, there are always uh, uh, challenges here and there, just like any other business. But the, the bigger part of the, of the business is, is enjoy some. Mm. There's money, you keep touching money every day. At least there's money you can make every day. Birds keep laying, eggs are being bought. Um, but I, I won't say that there are no challenges. There are challenges, there are losses. And uh, I want to tell the viewers that it's not about only the good days. That chick chicken farming has the difficult days when you, you lose birds to diseases, you buy medication, birds die. Some people have told me before that they started a farm and all the chicken died. I'm like, it happens, it's part of the business. Just like yeah. when you buy a car and get an accident. Mm -hmm. Just like you, uh, you start a business and maybe something, a catastrophic area happens and you lose it. In chicken it's there, but we always have to lift ourselves back and move. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, that's what I have to introduce myself uh, to you. Mm. Um, but uh, we, we are doing our best to ensure that we help other farmers, yeah. the farmers who are out there, through our different companies, Premise Farm, we try to train farmers, not on the farm, we don't do trainings on the farm because of biosecurity. Uh, we have uh, uh, outlets where we can train farmers, though it's now very difficult because of COVID. Mm. We, um, we try to use digital means, we prepare digital meetings to train farmers over Zoom and the rest. But outside COVID, we, we arrange different trainings that we try to market. Maybe Amans will also help us more on this. Yes. So to ensure that sure. the farmers do the right things. Yeah. Chicken is about doing the right thing because yeah. they don't talk. They're not yeah. just like, they're not like human beings that you will serve them bad food and they will reject it. Mm. Chicken will eat, but they won't produce. Mm. So if you're dealing with something that doesn't talk, you have to do the right things. Mm. So you have to be with the right company that knows what to do and advises you on how to do it. So Peter, um, I think I need, we need to, because I've been a victim of a person who has lost birds to, to, I tried poultry, I lost birds and I kind of gave it a break and I want to do it again because I, I lacked the knowledge, I really lacked the knowledge and poultry is not a business, you just don't, you, you don't just rush it too. These little birds are very sensitive. so. I, uh, how can you break it down for us? Like, okay, I want to start poultry. What is the recommended number that you think someone should have? Especially if you have your little money, like your little capital, but you want to maintain your birds, let's say layers, and you don't want to struggle in between until they are laying their first eggs. What do you advise a beginner? How many birds do you start with? You're beginning, you don't, you've never done this before. You don't want, I don't think you should start with 8,000, 5,000. What do you advise us? And how do you advise us to carry on this business? A beginner with your low cost, mm. your little capital. I think what is key is to understand your abilities. Yeah. Where you can, you see, like chicken is just like any other investment that if you invest, you should invest to a level where you have a, a turn back. Like if things don't go well, I can still resume again. Mm. So you don't give it the whole of yourself. Mm. Give it a shot. If it does well and you are mastered the game, you give it more. Mm. So in my view, uh, from 500 birds and above mm. is, is, is fair to start. It's ideal. It's mm. ideal to start with. And then you keep learning. How, on job. how big should the structure be in the 500 birds? Uh, that's very important mm. because when you are dealing with chicken, there are certain important things that we have to look at. Mm. The genetics of the bird is mm. very important. Yeah. The management, 
mm. of the body is very important and the nutrition is also very important. Those are key aspects. Yeah. So the environment involves the space where the birds are, yeah. the, the elevation, the orientation of the structure, mm. uh, the space the bird should be in. Like mm. in layers, we do seven birds per square meter. Uh, seven that's, birds per square yeah. meter. Mm. So you need to build a structure which can give you uh, that capacity. If we have, uh, if we do a simple calculation, mm -hmm. let me see. If there are seven birds per square meter, those who have maybe calculators can check. Uh, so if I have 500 birds, what will be the size of my house? How many square meters? 3,500. Uh, so, yeah, probably mm -hmm. that. You need to have that space. Okay. Because we have to allocate space for the feeders, the drinkers, and then the laying nests, as you'll see in our, some of our structures. If you're doing cages, um, it is quite different. Mm. So you just have to get space that can take up the cage. The cage. But, but if they are rotational birds? Yeah, rota we call them deep litter. Deep litter. Those which are that on the ground. Yeah. yeah. So those use seven birds a square meter. Then for cages, it will depend on uh, how many birds you want to do. If they are 500, each cage takes 120 birds, like those that we say that Neutrinova. So you will need like uh, three, you need four cages for your 500. And we can give you the measurements and you know what kind of structure you need. So when you're starting, what do you advise? You advise the depleter or the cages? No, the, the cages is the next level. You need to start in, on the ground, on, on depleter, so you yeah. learn. Yeah. As you learn, you can improve, you yeah. keep improving. Mm. I believe in improvement, continuous improvement at every level. So after you have like you have set up your structure, you how how much land do you need like for the whole to have a comfortable business like? Uh, it still depends. The bigger the land, the better because there are other things you have to do around the land. And and, and, and that's a very good mm. question, Sandra, because you need to plan the mm. farm. Yeah. Like here, if like people who are in town it might be a little difficult but mm. here if I have like one acre it doesn't mean I'll put structures wherever I mm. want. Mm. We need to sit down and plan that I'll put my gate here, the mm. entrance will be here, mm. my store will be here, my farmhouse will be here, my structures will be here, my mm. workers will still sleep here. Yeah. So you need to, to draft a plan mm. so that you can, because uh, uh, these are permanent structures, yeah. you're not going to change them tomorrow. Okay. So planning is key. For whatever land you have, it's an acre, two acres, three acres, you need to plan it right. Uh, and what are... Um, because we've looked at the capacity of the birds, we've looked at the structure, but the cost of the structure. What, what do you think... Because I've seen people have... Um, I've seen some people with structures that are like homes, like it can be yeah. a house. And others have simple structures and yet can still do the same business. Because you see, when someone is starting, they have their budgets. Yeah. And they are looking at what, how can I get through these six months until they lay. Yeah. So what cost, how, how much do you think that someone should spend on a structure that would take the 500 birds? Uh, now, structures are very, uh, they keep evolving. Yeah. If you're starting, I'll advise that you do a least cost structure. Mm. First of all, the, the, the things you need to look at is that the structure should be able to, the birds should be able to fit there, seven, uh, seven birds uh, per square per meter. Square meter. They should be able to get enough uh, ventilation. air. Ventilation should be good, mm. that is key. Mm. And water should not be able to enter inside there. Mm. They should be vermin proof, protect them from rats. So. With that in mind, you can say, I'm going to do an open structure, I want to do bricks, make sure that then um, rodents cannot easily enter, mm. rats can, uh, snakes cannot easily enter, mm. the litter doesn't go out. Mm. So the cost will depend. Mm. Like, if you will, you will see my structures, they're little improved yeah. structures, yeah. but they are not, I'm not saying that someone should start with that. Because mm. sometimes, uh, we always tell farmers that don't do something too expensive because we are looking at having yeah, chicken, yeah. not having beautiful structures. Yeah, not it's, not tourist, it's not a yeah. tourist site. Mm. We want the chicken to be comfortable. Mm. So we can do something that the least cost provided it meets those requirements. The birds are comfortable, rodents are not entering, water is not entering, the sun is not entering. So that uh, allows you to start. We want the birds to come in. Not, we don't want to spend the 
the money on the, the Gucci's of the house. <laughs> I know. You want to spend on the chicken. That's lady. Yes. The houses. And uh, uh, now, we have talked about the birds and the structure. That is perfect. Because I'm, I'm sure many of us think that, oh, to start a structure, you need all this money. So you find people lose, people keep getting out of the way, mm -hmm. the way. Um, like on the way, sorry. So what other essentials must be on the farm? The essentials, um, first of all, we must have uh, a store where we keep the, the, the feed. Yeah. We, um, Should it be ventilated? We, we, Should it be... Yeah, it, it can be... The ventilation is, is important. Yes, there should be some airflow because mm. we want uh, the temperatures to be mm. not so high because mm. we store their feed. We don't want our feed to, to cake. Yeah, yeah. The, the floor should be cemented for mm. the store because of rats. Oh, it should be cemented. Uh, so the other important thing are farmhouses mm. where people can sleep comfortably the after working. Mm. That is very key. Mm. Uh, fencing of the farm is very important mm. for security purposes because mm. we don't want to invest and then someone comes one day and takes and our takes investment. Every... So that is important. <laughs> we need to safeguard. And also for biosecurity. Mm. What is uh, this word biosecurity will always have to ring in our ears throughout mm. this business because mm. it's very critical. Mm. Biosecurity is preventing entry of disease in the farm. You saw when you came. Yeah. I don't know if you recorded yeah, whatever we recorded. activity was yeah. done to yeah, you. Yeah, we recorded. Next time when you come, we are going to. We are planning to put changing bathrooms outside the farm. You can bathe, <laughs> change your clothes. Because human beings are the biggest carriers of disease in the farm, so we plan to have more improvement in our biosecurity. Mm. So you change your clothes, change your attire, maybe take a shower, uh, then you come inside. Then our you farm. come inside. Yes, this is serious. <laughs> so biosecurity fencing is the start. Mm. Then the rest follows. If you don't have a fence, everyone can access your farm, animals can access your farm, uh, and those are the carriers of disease. And what do you talk about water? How, water is also how key. Is water? Just uh, when I am training farmers, I always tell them that the most, the biggest amount of substance that enters the farm are not even people, it's not feed, but it's, it's water. Mm -hmm. It is the, the biggest compound we use at the highest level. Because if our bird eats one gram of, of food, it will take two grams of water. water. So water is clean, fresh water is very important. And I emphasize, it has to be clean and fresh. Mm -hmm. If it's not one of the two, it becomes very difficult mm -hmm. because it's just like you see it enters the farm in big volumes, it can also bring diseases in big volumes. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful. So um, do you treat the water from the source or when? Where necessary, we treat the water. Depends on how you get it. Here at, at, at Premise Farm, we, we we don't treat, but we acidify. What's Acidifying that? is putting organic uh, food grade acids in the in the water to lower the pH so that no microorganism can survive because we cannot test every day. So we safeguard. It's like insurance. We continuously safeguard our animals. How, what do you use to acidify? Uh, we use agroseed. It's, uh, it's an organic acid from Belgium. So that is also vital that the pH you, you must You can be use well. another molecule. I don't insist that agroseed is. You can yeah. use uh, other acids, but mm. it's important that there's something you're doing to the water. Okay. You pay attention to it. Yeah, to it. Yeah, you can't because afford to miss it. Okay, now that's a lesson learned. You don't just give it water. You don't just no, give no, no, no. You need to understand which water you give. Just like us, I will, if I go to buy water, I will ensure I buy a certain brand. Mm. I ensure I boil it at home. So I mm. give attention. Mm. I don't just drink any water I find. Mm. Yeah. That is right. So um, now the structures are done. The 500 birds have come in. Everything is in place. Now let's go to feeds. Mm. When they are no, let's go to brooding first. Is it brooding? When yeah, brooding. Yeah, brooding. They are they are coming to the farm. The young uh, chicks, they old. How do we prepare for them? Good. Um, I will give you some some photos of brooders that we prepared mm. that farmers can look at. Mm. Uh, when the birds are young, we can go up to up to ten to twelve birds per square meter. Mm. We, we, they are more. We put them together. The essence of brooding, technically is to ensure that what the birds cannot get from their mother, just like mothers take care of their children, they wrap them, they give them warmth and uh, feed them, we try to, to mimic and reproduce 
that in the brooder. So we ensure that we reduce the space, give them beddings like litter where to insulate them from heat loss. Mm. We provide them light day and night so that they, they can eat as much as possible to grow out from that stage, mm. put on feathers and give themselves warmth. Um, uh, we, we provide heat because they, they don't have enough feathers to insulate the heat. Their, their bodies mm. from heat loss. So we, we, the essence of creating a brooder is to reproduce what, the, because the mother of these chicks is not there. So mm. we are now uh, the mm. parents. So we try to give them those services, clean water, uh, some vitamins are added in the water then to boost them to grow. Uh, the feed, we mix starter feed or what they call chicken duck. Mm. It's more concentrated, more protein more vitamins and minerals and we give it at free will in nutrition we call it ad libitum every every time the feed is there for them to eat as much as possible so what's the expected amount of feed that you spend on the brood um we it depends depends on the breed that you have mm. and those we can give the farmers guidelines mm. for every breed there is a guideline we give you that mm. this chick like for the first two weeks a bird will eat 120 grams mm. Each chick. Each chick. Yeah, usually Issa Brown. Mm. So 120 grams is enough for them for two weeks. For two weeks. Then afterward, they keep increasing. How long are they in the brooder? Uh, usually, they can be in the brooder for, uh, if they are layers, they can be there for maybe five to seven. Five weeks is enough. You can get out of the brooder gradually. Uh, for broilers, you can do two weeks. Mm. The brooder is. Getting, is enough. Yeah, it's enough because they put on feathers very fast. Fat deposition is faster for mm. heat insulation. Mm. Yeah. Okay, now the brooder. We, we, what else is in the brooder? What do you use to provide the heat? There are different heat sources that mm. we, we can make. Uh, I encourage farmers to innovate. Mm. Uh, you can buy uh, gas burners. You can use uh, charcoal. I tried you, pots. You can do pots, mm. you can do metallic sigiris. Here, what we use, we've invented uh, the use of Kajansi bricks. We construct them, uh, yeah, and then and put like the charcoal Bioto. inside and make like Bioto, yeah. yeah. Put the okay. charcoal there, they kind of uh, conserve the heat much. How do you know that the chicks are having enough heat? We have temp yeah, that's a good question. We, we have to install thermometers. <laughs> ah. And we, we guide the farmers when we give them chicks that at this week the temperature should be this then you keep reducing and also depending on the ambient temperature ambient like within the area if it's raining mm, yeah might have to increase the temperature because there's a lot of loss because it's cold outside it's cold outside yeah. uh if it's hot outside you might not have to put the temperature so high because mm. there's a lot of heat coming mm. from the sun yeah so it depends and then um the lights, how do you go about lights? Because I saw most of your... Most of, most of the houses have light. Yeah. Um, light is in important. In the building, especially in that stage. Light is important, but uh, there, there are a lot of uh, improvements in lighting. We have mm. now chicken lightings. Because the, the, the capacity of the bulb, the strength of the light is critical. Oh, okay. You don't want to stimulate. If you use ordinary bulbs, without taking care of how the size of the bulbs, you might stimulate the buds early enough, mm. which can cause problems. Mm. Uh, so so they become pregnant maturely. I mean, they <laughs> start laying. <laughs> they they won't laying start angry. laying maturely, but you yeah. don't want to stimulate them early enough. Yeah. Uh, you want the, the reproductive system to grow gradually. Yeah. And light is, yeah. is uh, uh, one of the stimulants of this reproductive system. Mm. And even in laying phase, you'll see we have light because uh, naturally here we have light for uh, close to 10 hours a day. Mm. But the birds, if they're laying, they need around 12 to 13 hours of light. What's the most, I would imagine, there should be a cost effective lighting process, not like umeme, you know? What do you use on the farm? On the farm, umeme is still the cheapest. Solar works, but the, the good solar is expensive to install. So, as I said, for us, in the beginning, it's You're about using umeme. Yeah, I'm using umeme. If ah. it's not there, I have a standby generator. Ah. If it's not there, I have some solar lights. Ah. So, but umeme for us. What is about this? Uh, this solar light. I've seen some solar panels with solar lights. Like, 
you don't have to dig and install it's just is that enough yeah it can work but you see solar is also has limitations yeah. like now it's, it's cloudy yeah you might not have enough charge yeah so you have a backup you have mm. like you need to have like two backups mm. one might fail and chicks will die in numbers if you're in brooder phase if light goes off instantly they'll crowd together and suffocate mm, and suffocate yeah. so you need alternatives oh okay our chicks are now okay with the uh, the structures are okay with the feeding now i just wanted us to go through um after the seven the seven weeks what mm. happens after the seven weeks okay uh we might not go to seven weeks we might stop at five weeks in the brooder so okay. we keep expanding the brooder as we re- mm. manage the temperature mm. so we go into another phase called the grower phase mm. it's a slightly simpler phase where we look at parameters like weight mm. the gro- we measure growth in layers by uh, the weight we change the feed to grower feed uh, which is less in protein less in vitamins and it's a longer period for the mm. growing stage it goes to up to four months uh, m- maybe three and a half then we start another phase called the pre-lay phase where we expect the first egg mm. so this is less hectic because the brooder maybe you're sleeping there there's a lot of heat, feeding, mm. so this is a much simpler stage. Then from the grower stage, you go to the pre-lay and then the laying phase where you start minting some money. Now in growers, what is the expected amount of feed in the growers? And how do you make, how do you endeavor not to spend so much on the feeds? How do you look out for your costs for the feeds? Because I know in growers, they are getting so active with food. Yes, the I only way the only way to farmers. save on feed mm, mm. is to reduce wastage. Mm. And if you can't to buy materials in time, mm. like maize when it is in season, maize brand. Mm. Uh, but nutritively and cost-wise, I don't want people to look a lot on saving on, on on the feed because what happens in my time I've spent in the industry is that farmers try to compromise on the on the, food they on the quality, on the quality and the quantity. Because they want to save money. This is not a time to, to save money. This uh, is a time to feed them. To babies. feed, to give the right, mm. uh, the right nutrients to the birds. So, to, that, they so give, that they grow. They and give you back. Yeah, they give you back. So when we are talking about feed and cost, we say cost, cost efficient feed. Mm. The feed that has the right nutrients, but it's at uh, not cheap. But, but lower cost. Uh, affordable. Mm. Should be affordable for you. Try to and make it affordable. And which one is that? Um, it depends on the season. <laughs> like now, if grow a feed that is very well balanced could be around 1,850 in that range mm. at the current cost of maize and maize brand. And if you want to, but ba- if you want to mix it locally, what are the nutrients? Because I've seen some people use um, this the fish, the small fish. The mukene. Mukene. Mm-hmm. Uh, what concentrates do you? Now, for us, we we use intraco concentrates mm. that mm. we that those? come from Belgium. Oh, they come from Belgium. So when they come here, we mix in uh, maize, are maize they, brand. Do you think they are affordable? They are affordable. Uh, like the for, alternative for us starter for the starter who is yeah they are they are more. You see, you can who plan with budget? them mm. because the challenge is that. The other materials like mokene, soya, the quality on the market is not good. It keeps changing, ah. which beats you. Yeah. So yes, if you use the mokene, you maybe have feed at 700. Mm. But again, what you're giving the birds, you're giving a lot of sand, a lot of diseases, a lot of bacteria is mm. coming with it. Mm. So most of the farmers have had relief from this to... Because uh, it's already tested and tried and it's... They are now using concentrates. Mm. Yeah. And they, are, they have done well. You can plan because you can know that I'll receive concentrate at this price. The quality won't change. My birds won't fall sick. I can have it. What What um, are usually in these concentrates? Good question. Uh, the, most of the the concentrates come with the, the protein, the vitamins, the amino acids, all balanced together. Are they organic or? Yeah. Uh, organic. I'm not yeah. sure what, what you called? mean by organic. No, there's some GMO. Yeah. No. GMO. Uh, I don't oh. know. I really don't know. But what I know, they meet the they meet the nutritional requirement of the birds, and we 
we can get returns. I think I'm trying to say, are they healthy? They are healthy because they have made farming much better uh, than before. Than before. Yeah. And they are trusted. Their sources are trusted. Yes, they are more trusted. We've been with them for the last two years now. They because do some it. people would be like, oh, maize bran. I know this is maize. That is fish. Let me mix my maize and fish. So you find a bar is very comfortable knowing that this is a healthy bird. It's not pumped. There are no chemicals pumped into it, and mm. and they're very healthy. Yeah, they're, 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 the, the the concentrates are very healthy because they're most of the can most of them the good ones come from Europe, mm. and these are very regulated markets. Mm. So they can't they can't do something, but they come with health certificates mm. approved by World Health Organization. Okay. Uh, and our standards here as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, In the past, we used to mix with fish, soya, but the challenge are Ugandan traders. Today, they will give you sand, tomorrow they give you another thing. Mm. They, 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 they cheat you. Mm. So the farmer was paying a big price. Mm. We were enriching the, uh, the dealers of Mukene and the rest. So, and yet we are get running out of business. Of business. Mm. That's, that's critical also. Very critical mm. to put attention there. So now we've gone to prelaying. We are still with our 500 birds. What are the expectations when they start, when you're at prelaying? Because there you're warming up to. Mm. You're seeing money somewhere now. Yeah. You yeah. start smelling. In, that, in the prelays, you'll start getting some eggs at least, a few eggs. Um, what is the normal for, for that period for 500 eggs? The normal what? The normal production rate. Like when do you know that? Okay, oh, so well we, we culture production well. in percentages. Okay. So if let me, I wanted to culture it for 500 birds. Mm. If they start laying uh, to reach peak production, it can take maybe three to four weeks. Then mm. they reach the peak. Egg mm. production goes in, in cycles. Mm. So we start, then start the calf starts going up, then it reaches maximum, then it, it doesn't drop sharply, then it starts, the calf will start dropping. Reducing regularly. Yeah. Mm. So 500 birds, um, if we can have them laying at, the normal here we pick at 94%. Mm. So we have 500 birds, uh, if we picked at 94%, uh, that's around 15 trays per day. Oh, okay. Yes. That's not bad. And uh, we can make around, uh, in the good, in, like now, currently we can make around 1,700 per trove of eggs. In a day? Yeah. So if you have 15 trays, that time was uh, 15 times 1,700. That's around uh, 25,500. Net. This is net profit. That is net profit. Net profit. That's our How much money is that? 25,500 per day. This is after taking off cost of feed, water, okay, or what labor. I'm you have 1,700 trays. No, I uh, oh. said 15 trays per okay, day. Okay, 15 trays per day. And you make ah. 1,700 shillings per ah. tray of eggs. That's a profit, per net tray. profit. Ah, tray. okay, for profit. Profit. So ah. around 25,000, okay. and in a month, that's around 765,000. From, 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 from 500. From 500. So you can imagine 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Yes. And, and when, as the number grows, yeah. the profit increases because the economies of scale. Mm. The, the, if it's one person feeding 500 birds, the same person can feed 2,500. Wow. Yeah. One house, one person. And Up to around 2,500, one person can manage. How many workers do you think like 500 chicken need? 500? One person. One person. <laughs> one person is enough. Is enough. Yeah, because I mean, these are the mistakes that. We make because at the end of the day you are in business. You're not chilling. You're not doing something for entertainment or for yes. passion. You're in business, so you need also to look at that. That one worker, five hundred chicken. Yes. So if you have like two thousand, you need. But when you're starting, even if it's a business, something unique about chicken, mm. you must get the passion. Mm. If you're starting, mm. because uh, if you put money first yeah. for everything, some yeah. decisions won't be taken. They won't be taken. So the passion must be there. You should love chicken. You should love animals. And there's, I think they should also be consistent monitoring. Yes. You have to be there. You have to be on the job because, mm. like, if it's not today is a Sunday, I'll be with my babies at home, mm. but I'm on the farm because mm. it's a job. Mm. You need to be around. Mm. You cannot do it on the phone. 
telephone farming is what has caused problems for most of the working mm. class. Mm. My advice would be start when you're still working, when you think the things are progressing, quit your job and go into farming. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about if it's it. possible. Nani I've seen so many workers. friends quitting. Uh, no, most start. people are now. Nan we are <laughs> we are we are facing problems of when you realize that you're non-essential you start seeing yourself like i need to find a way out oh, we are lucky that poultry will ever be essential yeah food you know, anything to do with food has you know food and these little re- supplies and retailers and all those people have been working yeah throughout they are the most essential yeah and yet when people see you coming to your farm peter they don't know that for you you know where the gold is yes we, we 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 are seated in offices wearing suits and holding Gucci passes, but yeah. uh-huh, what's the future? So now we have come to our growers. What happens when mm-hmm. you feel uh, you are pre lay? Then we have we have, we have now, gone to laying. Laying now. now. We are starting to get eggs. We can yeah. get eggs up to one and a half years. By the same bird. By the same bird. Wow. So you can have these birds on your farm for one year and nine months. So in those one profit. and a half, are they still going up or they are still going down? Okay. Like, good, good question. They can go up, we said within uh, within three weeks, they can go up to the peak. Mm. They can stay at peak for maybe a month, depends on the management, mm. feeding, mm. everything. Then even if they start dropping, they are, they are dropping profitably. Mm. Uh, it will depend on the season of mm. the year and the market. Mm. Like right now, even if you have birds at 70%, you're okay. They can make, they can buy feed and also save something for you. But in the bad days, it should be 80 for you to make money. 80. But now, as I talk, because the, the season is very good, even it was bad before. Now it's, yeah, it's good. good. We, we were seeing you guys crying with your birds, but now yeah, every business is like that. Yeah. In our business, there are always those bad days. Mm. Sometimes you can get maize going so expensive, mm. and then many people go out of the business. Then mm. when maize is because you see the cycle of layers is four months to start production but we've never had a challenge which goes beyond four months if it is maize it cannot be so expensive for more than four months mm. if it is the eggs becoming uh, too much oversupply it cannot be four months of oversupply mm. so we get two months of challenges then people quit the, then industry, quit the industry and then those who stay they reap because mm. now like as i talk we had issues persistence is really important. exactly mm. perseverance is everything mm. What, what issues did you have? Covid, yeah. uh, people were, <laughs> eggs were not going uh, across the border. How did you manage People didn't that? have money. We had to look at the, the savings and sustain the business. Mm. We had to and go. what were you doing with your eggs? You were still... Pushing. We were hawking them. <laughs> Take them to people's household, help, uh, help buy, uh, give out dates. Oh, we enjoyed eggs. But now they are the, the ones but coming to us. <laughs> now they are back to yes, you. Yes, they are coming oh, to us. Oh, ever didn't eat eggs during COVID. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. So now they are laying and... Um, what's, when do you know that they are laying well? When, when, do you, when do you know that the 500 birds in layers in that period are doing well? How many they, They're trays? making money. How many we said. 15 trays. Oh, those are the 15. Yeah, uh, so they can drop to maybe 12. That's mm. still okay. So, as I said, we measure it in percentages. Mm. If they are doing anything above, mm. right now, mm. anything above 70 is okay. Mm. 70% yeah. of your flock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no. you need to manage feed wastage. You need to manage uh, uh, biosecurity. If one of I, the I'll, biggest I'll, challenges yeah. with the farmers now is that the birds will perform at 80%. But your cost, your input cost is very high because you don't prevent diseases. Mm. You're spending a lot of money on antibiotics. Mm. Uh, you have a lot of uh, thieves on the farm. Mm. They are stealing your feed. Mm. They are stealing your eggs. Your eggs. So the, the birds are doing their job, but you are not doing your job. You are not doing your job. Yes. So yeah, that, that takes us back that you need to be present. Yeah, you need to be present. Mm. You need to be in touch. In you touch need to know what's going on at every point. You need to be in control of your feed, your market. Like here, I'm the only one who sells eggs. Mm. I'm the only one who purchases the feed. Mm. So I'm in touch. I know whatever is happening you, where. You, even keep, you, you audit yourself. Yes. Yeah. You can when audit you keep myself. It out, then you, you're just risking. So now, what happens when, after the one and a half years, you off lay? Mm-hmm. That's bonus money. Mm. 
those bonus money waiting for you. But uh, right now there are no flares. The flares are 14,000. So wow. you can maybe buy, build a new house with that bonus money, start something new, bring new flocks. Uh, when do you bring in the new flocks? When, when is it advisable? Because you don't want to reach after the two years and you lay off and then you sit. Good, Good question because you don't want your farmers yeah. to come and ask for eggs when you don't when have. When you don't have. Your clients will run away. Mm. So when the birds lay for more than uh, six months, uh, it's better you start a new flock. Ah. So you should always have a builder house. Ah. So as so you six going months, up, others are coming in. Yeah, others are coming in. So if they have That's laid for six advisable. months, uh, and you bring a you bring a new flock after four months, the old flock will be one year. These ones will start production as these ones are still giving you some money to feed these ones. Because these ones, ones peak, oh, the money comes. You can even off lay the other ones. Ah. Yeah, so because you the money you're making off, off these other ones from the trays come to feed these other exactly. ones. Exactly. So at the end of the day, you're not you're not pulling resources still. Yes. Uh, are there times where you, where you've had to go to the banks to borrow money for your farm? Yes, there's there's a lot of money for farmers in the banks. Mm. We definitely like when we are to have buy maize. Mm. Like here, we can buy around 200 uh, to 500 tons of maize when it's in season. So we go to the bank, get um, some overdraft, help ourselves mm. to, you know. So what are, uh, now I now feeding, eh? there's something I left behind. The ratio of uh, the concentrates to the maize and... Yeah, that's what I do as a nutritionist. So yeah, yeah. When the farmers come to us, we yeah. advise them, at this stage you do this, at this mm. stage you do this, this mm. you do that. So we, make, we, ask them, we advise them on the ratios to use. Actually, yeah. I think it's very necessary to keep consulting. Ex as even as we consult, yeah. even me consult, you, can, you cannot know everything. Yeah, because you end up spending so much and yet it's not necessary. You could have done it a better way and still get your profits back. Yes, yes. So now we have offlaid them. Now we are making money, money, money is coming in. Now we are going back to the challenges. I've heard you talk about biosafety. Biosecurity. Se security, biosecurity. Biosecurity. Uh, the diseases. What are, f let's talk about from the brooders, the stages. What diseases are, do you need to fight throughout the stages? Now, after offlaying, you mm. clean the house, mm. disinfect it, prepare mm. it for the new flock. So, before even you start, you have to disinfect the Yes, house. you have to clean and disinfect. Cleaning and disinfection go but, hand in hand. Mm. You can't disinfect that. That's what we do. We, we talk about hygiene. Mm. You have to, like, you, you have to soak your cloth then wash it, then rinse it. Mm. So just like when you're cleaning a house, remove the litter, the, the buds are out, remove the litter, sweep it, clean it, let it dry when it's clean, then disinfect it, then let it dry, then put in the How bud. long does this go for? What the is cleaning? The, ideal, the ideal period for disinfection? I think Do you disinfect a week, today and then tomorrow a they week, come in? A week before putting in the buds uh, is, is good enough. It's very ideal. It's very ideal. So the diseases that these birds keep getting and the vaccinations how do you make sure that these birds are vaccinated right on time by the you, right people by do you, you buy must have a team mm -hmm. you need to have a team that is in charge of vaccination yeah they do their program and uh, you share with them when put reminders that this day we have to vaccinate mm -hmm. know where they get the vaccine how much it costs mm -hmm. and vaccination needs to be done early. so you must have a team that is working on the vaccination and disease prevention. The common diseases now in poultry is Newcastle, which is a vaccinatable disease. Mm. Uh, so once you vaccinate the Newcastle, you shouldn't be able If you vaccinate right. In right and on time. And on time. Then you need to keep away uh, any other disease causing agents which will impact the immunity and maybe cause uh, birds to get sick. Because mm. if there's a lot of exposure of these birds to ba bacteria, then the immunity is compromised, and mm. if any infection comes, like Newcastle, it can easily hit them. We have costiosis, which mm. is also a very big uh, challenge, especially for birds with poor immunity. They get hit with uh, costiosis a lot. Uh, the other common ones for layers is E. coli and Salmonella, which is mm. sometimes through the water. Mm, if you don't treat the water, about if you don't, if you don't treat the feed, we also treat the feed. 
because as you buy maize brand, you buy maize, the post-service handling in Uganda is the poorest. Mm. There's a lot of exposure. I find people putting the maize on the ground to dry it. Mm. Then animals uh, put their mm. droppings in, in there. So you have so to treat it's, the maize. It's good you treat the maize as well, yeah. Oh, that's very important. Mm. I get it. So, um, uh, is it better to buy your own medicine, the vaccinations? It's better you buy, buy your, your vaccine. vaccine. Yeah, you mm. go to the importers of vaccines. Mm. They are known importers. Mm. You buy yourself. Mm. Don't allow the doctor to buy. It's better you buy. Mm. Maybe if the doctor is in-house. Mm. Like here we have an in-house vet. Mm. I know I can do it, but I am better off giving the responsibility to someone. Then I just follow them up because yeah. I have another job I do. Mm. Yeah. Oh, chicken. I think. So what are the challenges? What other challenges do you face during this? The biggest challenge is in, in poultry is being naive. Mm. Not having the knowledge of the what knowledge. to do is the biggest challenge. Mm. If you know what to do, there are no challenges in poultry. Mm. The diseases you can avoid, you can treat if, if you get an outbreak. The feed, if you mix the right feed, the birds will perform well. Mm. But if you don't know, then you're joking. Then you're joking. <laughs> you're joking with your money. Being a victim of not mm. knowing. But that's it's it, me. I, I call it the biggest challenge, not yeah. knowing what to mm. do. But even I think for farmers, getaway farmers, those who do farming not from home but from a, within a distance, you talked about the farmhouse. It's very important to have a place where you can, especially during the brooding period. From experience, I realized that you need to be there during brooding. Yeah, and you can't you keep be driving there. out of town, coming back, driving out of town. So when you have a small structure where you can just put a mattress or a bed and you can... You need a farmhouse. Yeah, you have... You a farmhouse. Yeah, you're better off than... Besides all the fuel you're using up and down and the costs, you'd rather be on the farm. Yeah. Uh, what else do you want to tell our viewers about poultry? The benefits? Uh, what have you done with the benefits? Reinvestment? No, I... Um, that's a good one. Uh, we... We, what I want to tell farmers, first of all, all the people that are watching this uh, recording, mm. is that with farming you can't go wrong. Yeah. Recently the president said he didn't know that there, there is even a, a rich man who doesn't have animals. <laughs> he didn't know, but, and I, I agree with him. I don't know how you can be rich when you can't feed people. Mm. One of the most essential things is feeding people. Mm. They need food. Mm. And if you invest in farming, mm chicken, cows, you can't go wrong. Mm. There will always be need for food. Mm. And the population is growing. Mm. Today maybe the world is six, I don't know how many billions. But after maybe five years you could be in uh, ten billions and above if you are not already there. So, so there will always be stomachs need, to feed. Still, they still need food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what we've done with the benefits, we are still investing in the farm. Mm. Because we've not attained our target. Yeah, you still need so there isn't money we pushed out. We actually we, we are still putting in money, but we are proud and sure that we are making. You told you just said that you've put up other structures. Yes, and on a three acre on three acres. Yes, and uh, we plan to have a capacity of forty five thousand by end of this year. And then that's when you start. No, we okay. have another target for next year. <laughs> yes. So what is your what what is your target like in overall? Around a hundred thousand, but wow! There we shall take a rest and then say, let's take, take <laughs> taking out take money slow. and let's uh, go to Bahamas for holidays. Uh, maybe for a holiday <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Peter, thank you so much for this um, enlightenment. Uh, I think we've learned a lot from this from this episode from this interview because we've always had. We've always had this perception that things are so tough. You can't do it. You can't do it. But it's very good to hear that someone just started humbly and they are here and you're aware with it. Because I've known you for a while mm. and I've seen, I've seen your life change so much. Mm. And it's also important to carry family with you. Yeah. Because, it, I mean, you don't want to be alone and then you start helping others behind. You should be with them when you're going up. Uh, thank you so much. We've learned so, so much. And I'm going back to farming chicken. I've got the gas to go back. Yeah. You know, I've been telling you about that, that I, I need, 
I, I mean, I, I fell once, it was so hard, but now I realize that I made mistakes. Mm. I really, really made mistakes. And this time I'm going to have it right. Yeah. I'll not look back. Then you'll enjoy it. There's another friend of mine who does chicken. She's called Molly. She's only inspired me to do chicken, to, to do poultry farming. And I also saw it transform her life. But I think I, I wasn't ready. But now I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. And I, I know many people out there have also been really inspired. Uh, those who also still have Q, Q's and A for Peter, we are going to find a way in which we can communicate. And Peter is available. Through Emanzi, Peter is available. You let us know when you need him. Uh, now we're going to have a farm tour. Yeah. Looking forward. So, this this is the cage system you're talking about. How how many? What's the capacity? No. Is it one full cage? No, we, we keep joining them. So from here, from one leg to another is one cage. Ah. So this one section takes 120 bags. 120. 120. Here and there? 160. If you, put, if you put four bags here, it will take 160. If you put three, it will take 120. Why are they three for now? What? what? It's comfort. What determines? Oh, the comfort where they can yeah. If you put four there, less comfortable, it compromises welfare. Mm. So we add 120 until the end of the house. So this row has around 18 cages. 18? You know something, yeah. So 18 times 120, that's how much is on this row. So we put another row, another row, depending on how big the house is. So just this cage alone takes 120, this side yeah. and that side? This side and the other side. Ah, so okay, okay. Yes. So, uh, you just measure how do you measure the feed how do you pour the now, feed now what is key you need to know how many bags are here on this line so we, put, we measure feed depending on the truck uh -huh. so if there are 100 bags here in a day we have to put uh, 120 grams every bag eats 115 grams so if there are 100 that is uh, 1 point 1.15 kilos per day ah, for this truck. For the whole truck. A number of bags. Ah, okay. So if they're in production, they eat a specific amount of grass. So it's it's mandatory to have a weighing scale. Mandatory, it's a must. And um, the eggs, these eggs are how 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 often do you pick the eggs? You pick okay. eggs once. In cages you can pick eggs once. Because okay. they roll down here and wait for you to pick the eggs. Ah. Actually, in cages, if you are not at home, you can close your house, put in the feed, the water they drink from these nipples. Where is the water from? Where do you pour it? It's from the tank. It comes directly. They plumb it and it comes. Oh, so this is a pipe. Oh, this is a pipe. Does the cage come with this? Yes, it comes with it. Okay. It comes with everything. It's amazing how they know where to get the water. Yeah, it's the color of the nipple red. Eh? Uh, so the nipple it has to be red. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about uh, cleaning? How often? Uh, the challenge, one of the biggest challenges at our hotel farmers is the litter in cages. You have to a lot of work. Keep up, keep removing the litter. Yeah, we move it every three days. Mm. But they are safe though. Yeah, they are very safe. They are here to produce eggs, nothing else. <laughs> Eat, drink, and produce. Eat, drink, and produce. So many. <laughs> oh my god. So, um, we import these cages. Uh, that's what I was about China. to say. What's the source? Uh, it's China, from Europe, depends on the class. We keep importing. You import them. Is it cheaper to import or? It's the quality. It's the quality. And the birds, where do you get the birds from? We also import the birds. From where? From Belgium. From Belgium? Yeah. So if someone wants birds, how do they... We can import for them. As premise farms? Yes, sir. as premise farms. They put in an order? They put in an order. How early do they have to book? A month in advance. So they take a month to arrive? Yes. Ah. Once we make the booking, they set the eggs after 21 days, they can ship the birds. So as premise farms, what is your involvement in my farm from the word? I want to, from the word I want to do poultry. We can we get involved at most of the avenues. Maybe not in the marketing, mm. but in the inputs in the farm. We 
You give me the birds then. As Nutrinova, not mm. premise, we have another entity. Okay, Nutrinova. Nutrinova will give you the birds, mm. give you the feed, can give mm. you the medication, mm. then you handle the marketing. And you can you can monitor my farm. A vet that monitor farms. Ah, you can give me a vet as well. We have a vet department that does extension. How often do you visit my farm? Depends. We don't have to visit all the time. If there is a challenge, we visit. But if there is no challenge, we can design a timetable. Like maybe once in a week, we check on what is happening in the farm. Are those all extra costs, or they they come with that? Is Depends. If you're using our services, we don't charge you that. Oh. It's a package. It's a package. Wow, that's good to know. So you give me the birds and you, you make sure you make monitor sure you them. Make profit. One you of make our profit. slogan is nutrition, health, profitability. We want to manage for you, with you, not for you, but with you, mm. to ensure that you make profit. Fantastic. What's that net for? Uh, the net is to shield light. If there's too much light, the, the birds will be... Can we have a look at that net? Can you... Mm? So we put this net to shield a lot of light. The is that, a, fi of this is that a fishing net? It's a construction net. A construction yeah. net. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, hold, it reduces the amount of light that can... Ah, uh, and it's constantly there? Yes, it's permanently there. Because there was a problem with this structure. It should have the orientation should have been different for the mm. to, to go indirectly. Because mm. uh, how different is it from that one? Is that because of the matoke there? Yeah, because of the vegetation there. The vegetation, okay. Perfect. And what's that yellow? It's a fly trap. Mm. This is done by Nutrinova mm. for, for reducing the amount of flies. If we didn't have this, you'd see so many flies around. Mm. So a fly management uh, technique that we use. So how do you manage the record keeping? No, we have a manager who has records. Mm. She's in charge of the books. She's okay. in charge. Oh, she, the other lady we saw. Okay, and the one in charge. do you bring auditors once in a while? Yeah, we, we, we have auditors that come every week to look at the books. Because it's the B farm is so big, you need yeah, to keep, yeah, track yeah. Of, keep track of the books. Of the books. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Peter. <laughs> We're done with the tour. As you can see, I still have the babies in the background. Peter has taken us around. He has such a huge farm. He's minting money and we know we can do it. It's not so hard. It just takes the will and it takes the, cap the budget. We need to plan, of course, we need to budget. Um, thank you for viewing our, our, our channel today. Thank you for subscribing thank you for following us we thank our sponsors serena hotels thank you for having faith in us we can't forget you we're grateful for that keep safe take care of yourselves and please those who still need peter let us know emans will take care of that uh, we can have more sessions more training sessions any q and a for peter emans will take care of that Otherwise, God bless you and take care. Bye.